Welcome back, folks, to the last few minutes of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Yeah, thanks again for joining me this morning as we talk about real estate and a lot of changes happening in our market right now, and, and it's affecting people you know, in different ways. Obviously, sellers are, are thinking, and we're thinking, a lot of them are thinking, you know, if I'm going to sell, if I'm going to do this thing, um, and, it's, and it's something that I want to do but not something I really need to do, it seems like we're getting pretty close to now being the time for me to pull the trigger. Um, same thing on the, on the purchasing side. A lot of folks have said, hey, I'd like to move, but there's nothing for sale. Where am I going to go? I think with the changes in the market, it's, it's loosened things up just a little bit. It's created a little bit more of a level playing field. Uh, and I think it's inspiring people into, into action here. So, uh, and I can just tell that based on the conversations we're having and just the tone of those conversations, the, what, what people are asking, what they're feeling and thinking, which again, uh, I think plays into why listening to this show can be very valuable to you as somebody that sells a lot of real estate here locally uh, and, has, and has been in the top 1% of agents here since 2009, um, I can give you that, that ear to the ground pulse on the market that the data is just not going to show you because of the lag in the data. And so for the last few minutes here, I want to talk about if you're a buyer and you're entering this market, what are some of the things that, that you should know? And I think first of all, we're, you know, like I mentioned, we're entering a time where things are just a little slower overall anyways, based on the seasonality of the market. So I, I do think you as a buyer can use what's going on right now to create a little more doubt in the eyes of the seller, meaning you make an offer Maybe you go back and forth a little bit. Um, now, traditionally, or, or especially over the past few years, we would say, "Hey, don't don't sleep on that. Playing hardball for a thousand bucks or two is not a great strategy because more than likely someone else is going to come in and they're going to make an offer and they're going to kick you out of this deal. Is it worth losing this house for two thousand, three thousand, for whatever it is? Well, now that the market's slowing down a little bit." especially for something that's been on the market for a little while. Again, this is a bit of a tricky uh, or, or risky play, but you can make an offer, seller counters. You make a counter to their counter, they make a counter to your counter, you do the back and forth game, and then instead of the seller waiting and basically using your offer as leverage to try and get other offers, which they're gonna do anyways, by the way, they're gonna do that in any market, up, down, sideways. But now that the likelihood of another buyer swooping in uh, with something better than your offer is a little lower, meaning you get the ability to play a little hardball. So it's listed for 500, you offer 480, they come down to 495, you go up to 490, they want uh, you know 493, and you say, ah, yeah, 490 is our number. Um, you know, we hope the seller takes it. If not, hey, we, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. When you can detach emotionally from the offer process, um, it actually opens up a lot of doors from a negotiability perspective. It, I mean, it really does. When you show that somewhat level of indifference, then uh, usually the seller or the other party will show their true colors. Uh, they'll reveal their cards just a little bit. That's at least something that I've found in negotiating deals for you know, over you know, 17 years, about 1,100 plus transactions. Um, so I think that you've got a little bit more room to be um, be a little tougher with sellers on, on negotiations. Play hardball a little bit more. Um, now, d because of the change in the market, does that now give everybody license to submit lowball offers and buy things for 20% off? You know, no. I mean, first of all, you can do whatever you want. I <laughs> mean, you're an adult and you're buying a house. You can offer whatever you want at any point in time. The likelihood of that being accepted, obviously, that's another story. Uh, you don't want to offend sellers because then you're kind of working against yourself rather than collaboratively, collaboratively whatever you do. You know what I'm trying to say. Can't say that word. Work together <laughs> to try and make a deal happen. Um, you know, I think another thing that you should consider if you're a buyer in this market is, you know, so many people want turnkey, right? They want to be able to just move from point A to point B and not touch anything. But for the sellers out there that might not have the ability financially to truly prep their home for sale, 
you know, do the paint, do the carpeting replacement, uh, maybe do some, some light repairs, uh, maybe bring things up to date a little bit. That's where I think you as a buyer can make some, some money. You can make some, some instant equity. So I would consider doing some light renovations that you can live through. I mean, it does suck living in a house where you can't use a kitchen for three months. Uh, and I know because I've done it and I don't suggest it. Uh, but consider doing some light renovations that you can live through. And we've got folks for all different kinds uh, of things, all different kinds of projects. I think, you know, we at some point we'll probably just start a construction company because we send people out on, on, on a daily basis, no kidding, uh, to, to do work uh, for, for the properties that we help people buy or sell or for the properties that we manage. The last thing that I would say is with regard to buyers, and frankly, there's more that I could talk about on this topic, but... If a home seems as though they're a little overpriced, or if a home has already had a price reduction or two, or if a home has been on the market for, call it 30 plus days and they've not had a price reduction, then that should be a pretty telltale sign that something's off. They're off the mark and usually it's price driven. I think sellers have this preconceived notion that if their home's on the market for more than say 30 days, then buyers are gonna think something's wrong with the house. And that might be perfectly true. What's wrong with the house is that you're asking too much money for it. So what, I, what I'm getting at is this. I think there's an opportunity, and I know because this has worked on our end, even recently, there's an opportunity for buyers to start getting some closing costs paid by sellers again. For you to save some of that cash, some of the, some of the actual money that you need to purchase that property, the hard cash, you can incorporate that into the deal in the form of closing costs paid by the seller. So if you'd like more on some of these types of strategies, you want to work with a real estate agent that really understands the process, uh, especially in a shifting market like we're in, then please give me a call, 843-800-0065. That's 800-0065. Or check us out online at listingsincharleston.com. Thanks so much for listening. Y'all enjoy your weekend.